Hey everyone, welcome back to more Offworld. So, in light of the fact that I've lost all three of the games that I've played on this channel, and that some people have actually asked me to basically explain more what's going on, because it, it can be a complicated game, that, that's fine, I understand that. So, in light of all that, I'm actually going to do the tutorial. Now, the tutorial in this is really good. I actually really like it. It's a nice, simple enough tutorial. It explains the game well. And yeah, so we'll jump straight into it. As you can see, I've already done it. I did it ages ago. I don't really remember when. But we'll jump back into it. And yeah, so yeah, right, we'll just, yeah, okay. Uh, so this is business building. So I think it just looks at just building the buildings on the basic resources. I'm not even sure, it's been a while since I've done this. So, okay. Hello human, welcome to Mars. I'm Joji, 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 Joji5, and I'll be overseeing your upgrade to knowledge. This planet is quite dangerous. You will learn about the resources to be found here and how they can be used to grow a business. We expect you to upgrade the Yoshimi Robotics facilities. Your decisions will be less than optimal. This is unavoidable and quite human. Wow, thanks you asshole. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So, what a magnificent achievement. This is the finest of Yoshimi's robotic facilities. Orders are automatically queued and implemented by the same robots produced within its assembly lines. With the leadership positioned correctly in place, this factory should be able to outproduce any competitor and with no untoward risk to life or limb of the humans back on Earth. Metal resources. This is an ideal location with rich aluminium and iron deposits nearby. So these little orange squares are the iron and the greyish, well, they're sort of, yeah, they're, they're grey, we'll go with grey. The grey squares are aluminium. Why are there different number of cubes? The number of cubes for each resource represents the density of the deposit. Mining a deposit doesn't use it up, but a high deposit yields more resources over the same time period. To access metals, you need to extract them by building mines where they are found. So here we got new resources here. So these are basic controls. I mean, same as any game, you know, where's the arrow keys to move? We've got our objectives in the top right here. So we need to build a metal mine there and a metal mine there. And we've got to wait for that. I will put on fast speed just because from memory, Okay. Uh, excellent work. I've never seen you build this successfully before. You may continue to excel past moderately low expectations. Wow, if that just isn't just the sum of my school years. We construct buildings as quickly as possible, but hard work takes time. In the past, I've undervalued the need to strongly affirm the simplest of successes. This mistake has clearly been corrected in my latest build. You sure are not missing a batch. Uh, look at that ship go. So proud we are of our human friends. Transport ships deliver resources to our factory from remote locations. Buildings that are connected to our factory automatically add their production to our stockpile. Efficiency is the des desired goal, but sometimes to get the right ingredients, patience is required. Patience is quite hard to quantify. We build a mine and it is productive. The number next to the aluminium represents the amount of aluminium we have in storage. The aluminium will be used to upgrade our factory. Unfortunately, iron is quite prone to deterioration. Please build a steel mill next. The largely useless iron will be taken and transformed into durable and rust-free stainless steel. A meaningful transformation. Upgrading is very important. It is unfortunate how hard it is <laughs> for humans to upgrade. We are saddened for you. Uh, this robot's got quite a bit of sass here. I, I do like it. It's um, it is a lot of reading for a, a tutorial, but I think that can't be a bad thing. If you have to, if they go into more detail than is necessary for a tutorial, then that's only more benefit to you. We'll just wait for the steel to come in. And yeah, no, I, I quite like it. It's quite a funny robot. Yes. It's, it's good if the tutorial is enjoyable because if it if it was just a bunch of reading and boring then you wouldn't be incentivized to go through it and then it would be a struggle to learn the game etc etc. So we'll upgrade. Such success. 
the freaking Doge meme such success. Wow. Much, much upgrade. Without a shadow of doubt, you are the person who gave the order that successfully upgraded our factory. If it were not for your efforts, we may have upgraded in half the time, which of course is irrelevant. I feel like this is like what you do if you need to fill the word count in an essay. You know, I'm doing a great job. Damn right I am. Pay attention to these new cubes, which are not cubes, but are much pointier. <laughs> Their color variations create optical excitement. The yellow triangle represents silicon reserves. The black is triangles is where carbon carbon is found. Mines are suboptimal for gathering these elements, which will require structures called quarries. Mines for metals, quarries for elements. Okay, simple enough. So we've got the carbon over there, and we've got silicon there. Nice and simple. Now again, I, I can't say now. It's, it's a funny tutorial. It's really just ah, it's enjoyable. I mean. Also, the music as well. The music in this is so nice. It's so relaxing. Perhaps it was strange for you, gathering silicon and carbon without the knowledge of why. We were simply testing your degree of compliance. There are many safety precautions that limit our ability to be fully autonomous. We wanted to share that experience with you. We are now friends. I've always wanted some of those. <laughs> I will share with you a truth. Robotic businesses run on energy. Each building, production facility, and transport vessel consumes a certain amount of electricity. Solar panels harness the power of the sun for a strong supply of energy. The setting of the sun interferes perpetually. The sun is strong, but fickle. Wind turbines harness the strong wind currents for a more modest, but consistent source of energy. It is tasty when dust storms surround us. Providing us with the necessary power to continue our work is really what a friend will do. Right, so we're going to get some of that tasty energy. So as you can see here, just quickly, so you've got like the sort of more orangey and the yellow. The lighter it is, and this um, this is only for energy, but the lighter the, the tile is, the more you'll get from it. So here you'll see 1.17 energy, and up here you get 1.13. So quite simple. It's, it's very aesthetically pleasing and simple. Go for the solar panels. Um, if I remember correctly, the all the electricity buildings take twice as long to build as normal mines or quarries or something like that. I could be wrong, don't quote me, but I think. The darkness. It is night time. Now is a good opportunity for a bedtime story. Oh, I love those. Once upon a time, there was a business where people stopped working and rested. That business was bought by a competitor. The, the employees were fired and replaced by workers who did not require so much rest. The only thing that stops working after nightfall are things that require the sun. It should be most obvious to you that our solar panels were completed at an inopportune time. I hope you realise that an alternative power source is required. Considering our options, I believe a wind turbine is needed. Before you inquire, I would like to volunteer the fact that I am not afraid of the dark. I am just saddened by structures that appear non-functional. That is indeed very good to know. So again, as you can see, sort of darker tile here, 0.78, and a lighter one is 1.17. Uh, I think these are all about the same. So we'll just build it there. It doesn't matter, really. Yeah, so tutorials are obviously a bit easier than the main game, no doubt. I mean, look how well I'm doing. There's, there's no competition to buy me, so I am safe and secure. Done. Okay, so so many new opportunities are coming our way. The correct development steps were implemented and the goodness awaits. Carbon and silicon are useful for many things. My favorite is to combine them with aluminium to generate electronics. Our factories require electronics to upgrade and operate successfully. Build electronics. Let's just build it there. Think of all these, you can build them in other places, but it just costs you fuel, so it's just better to place it next to the HQ. Wait for that, and we'll need to wait for electronics to upgrade, which is fine. Look at these little ships as well. Everything just flows so smoothly. Can upgrade. Once again, without emotion. 
Beauty is a concept that I am not programmed to comprehend. It must be similar to the experience of observing the robotic HQ grow to its new level. Thank you for your obedient compliance with our growth needs. There's one more data point which will enable your successful management of our Yoshimi business venture. Geothermals, my favorite. The most unfortunate splitting of the Martian surface can be observed. Warbs, uh, sorry about that. Warm steam emerges from these fractures and provides a good opportunity. Geothermal plants capture the heat from these rare thermal vents and convert it to energy. This is a delicious idea. Please construct one of these plants so that we may have an abundance of energy for all our future needs. Go to geothermal. <laughs> Prepare for an early retirement. I ain't, I ain't retiring. I'm, you know, I'm so young and free. Wow, success. Uh, sorry about that again. Such, such success on your first endeavor. Your time of learning with Yoshimi Robotics has come to a requiem. I've decided that our time spent together is more than enough to last me for the rest of my processing cycles. I am full and require no more of your time. With these encouraging words, your upgrade is complete. You now know enough to run a, a successful business into the ground. <laughs> oh, if that is not the truest thing that this guy has ever said. Enjoy your time on Mars until your inevitable retirement. I'm not ready to end the Great job, human! Yay! Advance my career. I will just quickly check how long this recording has been so far. Only 11 minutes. We've got time to do another one. So, corporations are people. So this one, I think, is about uh, complying to the needs of the, the settlements that you'll see. Loads in. Ooh, wait, epic music. Hey partner, Teneca Development is a market leader in the growing off-world industrial revolution. Working with us means you'll be making history. I hope you're as excited about this amazing opportunity as I am. You need to be willing to take on mind-numbing debt and soul-crushing responsibilities, but I promise it will be worth it. I didn't realize we were playing the game of life, but so be it. You'll be taking over responsibilities at our new Los Angeles branch. Our business is already well positioned with the supply of steel, aluminium and silicon. We've got our power needs covered by the wind turbine on the crest of that crater. We're not content to do fine. Seneca Development will teach you how to expand your internal expectations. You're here to help pave the way for the next stage of our business venture. Since this new venture involves other people's hard work, you need to make sure they survive out here. Water is the key ingredient for sustaining life on Mars. The blue cylinder represents underground water deposits. You can get a good supply started by constructing water pumps on these deposits. Of that. For a second there, I will admit I almost forgot the word for cylinder. It's alright, I remembered it. I grade three? I don't know, when do you even learn shapes? I don't I don't remember. There's a like kindergarten? Who knows? Nice work on the water production. Maisie is teaching you how to set up a well-run business. I'll show you how to turn a profit. You can see how important the extraction of resources is. Even more critical to us is the sale of those resources. Let me introduce you to our customer. They have great needs and deep pockets. Old Earth some of her finest out here to start a new life. They are willing to brave this harsh climate in pursuit of a better future. Their bravery is fueled by one word, hope. Hope for a new industrial revolution. Hope for jobs that can sustain their families. Hope to transform their colony into a successful port, trading with the asteroid belt. The needs will make us money, but the hopes will make us wealthy. Yeah. True capitalist simulator. The resource list is a lot more than a stat sheet tracking your production output. It also shows the market value of resources which can change dynamically based on the supply and demand of the colony. Food is selling at $90 per de de deca bushel? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll go with that. That's a, yeah, anyway, I'll leave it. You should make a move and invest some resources into producing food. So I make food. You're going to need to build some farms. That's a great use for the water we've been collecting. 
But now there's a small problem with the plan. We don't have any glass and, you ne and you'll need some to construct farms. There's some surplus re- Ah, oh, sorry about that. There's some surplus resources, buy some glass, and you should be able to construct the farms. So, we'll just sell some silicon. What did we need again? Oh, we needed to buy 10 glass. Uh, we need a thousand? That. So, buy 10. Not quite 10. Uh, we can sell perfectly good for. Ah, oh, this is basically just saying don't sell it for under 10 bucks because. It's probably not worth it. Which is true. Oh, I need to buy 20 glass. Okay, um, I'm just gonna sell a bunch of them. A 10. A second farm. Okay. I like your style. Putting buildings next to each other is a good way to get more of a good thing. Each greenhouse farm is now 50% more productive because of their placement. With planning like that, there's no limit for what we can accomplish. I will just mute my mic here quickly. So it turns out that the the, the button to mute and unmute un un my microphone is also the same hotkey to take a screenshot, so I'll have to change that after. But yeah, I had to take a quick drink of water. Talking is quite hard. Anyway, having a good food supply is not only smart, it's good business. As our expansive HQ grows, so does our staff. You're ensuring our employees have the energy to continue working hard for you in the future. Another benefit we provide to our employees is breathable air. It's a pretty huge perk. Thus suffocating is a benefit. Hey man, don't kink shame, some people are into that. Not me, that's, that's weird. Anyway, the electrolysis, electrolysis reactor takes water and splits the water mu molecules into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. The hydrogen is processed into the fuel used for our transports. The oxygen is rapidly cooled and stored in its liquid form. Uh, what are we doing? Ah, uh, two electrolysis reactors. And anticipate massive profits. I cannot wait. I should unpause it. Yeah. I don't know what hockey I'll change the muting and unmuting to. I really like it on F12, but uh, I don't think I can have it there. Because I think the, the screenshot is F12 for all Steam games. Anyway, we now have a production pipeline for fuel and oxygen. There's been a bit of a supply snafu though. We aren't pumping enough water su to supply the greenhouse farms and the electrolysis reactors. The number next to the water icon is our production rate. Right there, where the mouse is. Whenever that number is red, we're using more of that resource than we're making. We're not losing money, but we are losing the opportunity for generating profitable resources. The water pump will help a lot. There's also water available in the ice fields above us. You can collect it by using solar condensers. This method of water pumping water production isn't nearly as efficient as the water punch as the water pumps, but it will do in a pinch. Unfortunately, we're completely out of land claims, so there's that. Land claims. So Maisie tells us Maisie tells us that we're out of claims and need more water. That's where upgrading the expansive HQ can really help out. All of the land that you see around you is owned by the colony. Claims are given out sparingly by the colony to the businesses that they trade with. By expanding our facilities, we earn more of their trust, hence more claims. Let's upgrade and take advantage of that trust to stabilize our water production. So, we need to upgrade, so we need to wait on glass. We need 10 glass, which will need roughly, I don't know how much, I'm horrible at maths for the record. Sell a bunch of that food, because that is really going up there. 10 glass, there we go. Great. Build two solar condensers. We need more glass. And we also need to build a water pump, which I will just do now. Um, they're running out. It's fine. I think that's the post. Uh, that's really cheap. I shouldn't sell that. Uh, some more food. Need to buy five glass. And just put them there, I guess. Yeah, so wait for that to be done. Yeah, so. That's that. Wait for those to build. Right. I feel bad keeping secrets from you at this point. It's time to come clean. We've been running quite a deficit due to the cost of power since you started. We owe over $12,000. Uh, 
that one wind turbine isn't quite enough to supply all of our structures with the required power and colony with the required power and the colony has been selling us energy at the market rate. Listen, running a business is really stressful. Do not worry about all that money we owe, seriously. You can pay your debt off whenever you have extra cash, but it's better to reinvest it in better infrastructure. Too much debt can literally crater your opportunities in the future, but let's focus on making more money instead. Build some power producers so we move away from an energy deficit to an energy surplus. We'll be building solar panels. Is it right? Learn to live with debts. I already have. Both in game and in life. Not really. I don't have debt. I'm doing fine, I guess. And I do that with uh, quotation marks with my fingers, but. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Alright, so there's that. Check out those wonderful numbers next to the energy icon. I totally agree. Uh, we're running a surplus and making money by selling the extra back to the colony. Of course, the money we're making by order selling our energy surplus gets supplied to our debt. Hopefully you can see why I wasn't too worried about our debt. Using our cash to make more money is the best way to stay out of debt to begin with. There are a lot of things that we could do to increase our profits, but unfortunately we're out of land claims again. So, gotta upgrade the HQ. Uh, more glass, how much do we need? 15. Uh, let's just sell those. Good. Colony just gave us a bunch of new land claims and I think it's pretty clear what our next move is. The price of glass is looking really good at the moment. We've helped drive the price up by buying so much. Let's flip the script and recoup some of that cash by producing some glass of our own. So. Glass kilns are enormous kilns where oxygen is burned to melt silicon into, glass, into large glass panels. Glass is made from the following. Okay, so one oxygen and four silicon. Alright, yeah. These sturdy panels are used throughout the colony and enable us to make Mars a beautiful place to do business. Believe me, without the fantastic views and the expansive HQ, we'd have a hard time with our executive retention. We need elemental quarry, silicon, put it there, put three gla glass kilns. Uh, there, put there. You have to wait 50 glass, okay. Not only are your real estate claims on point, but you've also constructed the most efficient layout for three buildings of the same type. Ah, so it's just saying, yep. Um, shortages of opportunities. Our timing couldn't be much better. A minor industrial accident blew out almost every window of the colony's research module. I love seeing prices go up. Shortages like this occur from time to time. Sometimes they, they are the result of problems at the colony. Other times the expected shipments from Earth don't arrive on time. It doesn't matter much to us. We can profit from shortages as long as we have what they need. Listen here, if you need glass, it may feel like price gouging, but the reality is that the demand has gone up and supply hasn't kept pace. We're in a free market, friend, and this is what that word looks like. I'm not going to even bother trying to pronounce that, no hope. If demand goes up, feel free to worry about the details, but only after you've figured out how to make a profit from the opportunity. Again, very, very capitalist-like. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Top notch performance. It, can't, it can be easy to lose your head when the market heats up. Keeping your cool and focusing on results shows that you have what it takes to compete. Our business is really rolling along and with that glass sale you've sold, you have a solid cash influx that gives you options moving forward. Side benefit of having a strong business is that the colony benefits as well. You can see that the colony has grown since we started working together. That is due in, in large part to our hard work. Earth is hoping that the colonies can revive human, humankind's future, but it's businesses like, like ours that will ensure their success. We don't influence how the colony grows, but the expansion efforts of the colonies can greatly affect the prices of resources. This is the shipping and receiving heart of the colony. It, every resource bought or sold finds its way through this port. Rolling over the port will provide you with an overview of the colony's consumption. As a business, we care a lot about the construction materials. The colony is populated by citizens and their life support needs 
make up the majority of their consumption. The most important structure are the habitat units that allow the population of the colony to grow. The more colony grows, the more they consume. An expanding colony is good for business. The colony's jobs are split up among laboratories, machine shops, offices and warehouses. Each workspace also limits the consumption of the colony. There's a lot of reading for this bit, I did not realise that, that there was this much. Just like corporations, colonies are people. After a busy day at work, people sometimes need to take a break and blow off some steam. Who knows what people need... Who know? Ugh, sorry, I got caught up on those words there. Who knows what people need more than well-run businesses? No one, that's who. Maisie Song is going to tell you about the amazing revenue stream that results from a well-placed pleasure dome. The pleasure dome is a place where workers can take a break from long hours of toil. They pay handsomely for a release from the daily grind and it's quite a lucrative revenue stream. We should build one next to each other, one next to the colony, preferably adjacent to as many habitats, habitat units as possible. Real estate is always about the location, location, location. I'll find the right spot, yes, in the pleasure dome. That's uh, that's not supposed to be about anything whatsoever. Uh, buy 40 electronics. Okay, and so it looks like the most profit will be there. I did not realize there was going to be this much reading. Uh, if I had known, I probably would have split this into two videos, but it's a bit late for that now. So go with it. It'll be a bit of a longer video, but it's just how it's going to be. You really know how to make the best of a good idea. By, strategic, by strategically placing the pleasure dome between all of those habitats, you've ensured optimal profits. Strong, de strong decision making is the way to rise to the top. It has been a pleasure to walk you through the Sene Seneca way. Pleasure Dome is going to provide a nice income for us and that's what business is all about. Finding out what people need and selling it at an inflated rate. We are now certified to plan and execute a small business by Seneca Development. Before leaving, sign this. What happens if you don't sign? I actually want to see. Never mind. So, climb the corporate ladder. Anyway, I'll leave the video at that, so that's the, the first two tutorial missions right there. Next time we'll come back and we'll probably do each one of these in single videos, but for now, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you must, and I'll see you guys next time.